Hello and welcome to the video. If you've been watching our Malaysia videos, you will have seen that we have experienced the glitz and glam of Kuala Lumpur. We've seen the Petronas Towers. We've been up the KL Tower. We've seen the amazing city. However, we're here to show you another part of Kuala Lumpur today. We are starting our day off at the National Mosque and we're going to some other places, so stay along for the ride. Today, come to the National Mosque in Malaysia. It is really amazing. It looks absolutely beautiful. We've had to get dressed to be respectful, and they do just hand these out for free. The girls have got their kits on. I've got my kits on. Chris has also got a robe on as well because he's wearing shorts. We've all taken our shoes off. We've just walked in. We're going to go have a look around, and this is actually our first experience of a mosque. So I'm really interested to have a look around. This is also my first time in a mosque and this journey is all about learning and experiencing new things. What better way to do that than coming to Malaysia's National Mosque? It's so big, it feels really peaceful in here, really quiet, really spiritual. Um, the girls have also been learning a lot about this mosque so they're going to give you some facts along the way. But let's go experience this and what it has to offer. This mosque can hold 15,000 worshippers at once. So as you know, this is the main prayer hall. Yeah. We have a specific prayer direction. Right. Right. How do, you, do you know how we tell? No. Okay. <laughs> no, that's centerpiece there. The okay. one in the middle there. And that's a prayer niche. Right. Uh, it's called the mehrab. 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 Mehrab basically marks the prayer direction of the prayer wall. So we'll be facing that way for prayers. So that would be our prayer direction. And yeah. it eventually leads to uh, the city of Mecca. Mainly men and women pray together in the same hall. Yeah. So, but we don't mix together. So the men form their own lines. The and the women, women, yeah, they start their lines down there. Basically, you, you, you can see there's a lot more area allocated for the men. Yes. You know why? Less of space for the women. Is it because there's less of them? Yes, because... Because prayer... The children? Uh, no, not really. No. <laughs> because because uh, prayer at the mosque is, uh, is an obligation upon the men. Ah, uh, so the women don't have to. So they don't have to. It's, it's optional for them. Ah. So, yeah, no. So there's a really lovely gentleman. I asked him a little bit about how they worship here, how many people attend the prayer, and he said that there's a special prayer on a Friday, and they have about 5,000 people attend that on a Friday. Now that hall, he said, isn't quite large enough, so it only holds about 3,000 people, but they create lines which they follow the carpet on the floor, and then they come out and they stand around here following on the lines to follow the prayer. pray five times a day. So these columns were supposed to be designed to look like a coconut tree. And there we have it, our first trip to a mosque and not only that, the National Mosque of Malaysia. It was a really good learning day, especially for the girls homeschooling. We also got to learn a lot as well because it's our first time here. So, a great experience all around. We better go get some food now because we're hungry. So we've come for some food at Valentin Roti, which is a famous Roti Chanai place in Kuala Lumpur. Roti Chanai is like a traditional breakfast, so we're going to be having some of that. Um, I don't know if it's related to the infamous motorcycle racer, Valentino Rossi, but it kind of sounds the same, so I don't know whether this was his favourite dish. Comment below if that is what it is. Um, but we're just going to have some Roti Chanai and enjoy it. Roti masala, which has got potato in it as well. 
It looks really yummy. I'm actually dribbling because I'm really, really hungry. So I'm going to use my spoon cutting technique. And here we go. Mm. Whatever is in that sauce, it is stunning, really, really nice. So I've got some tea taric, which is like a milky, frothy tea, sweet tea, which is found in Southeast Asian countries. We're going to give it a go. I've never had this before. It's a hot tea. Really sweet, super sweet and creamy. I'm used to a good cup of Yorkshire tea, but uh, tea taric is not bad. So I have um, a rock tea. It basically is a pancake, but it's called a rock tea. And it's got some cheese in it. And then it has a banana one, and I have a cheese one. And that's all for me. So first I'm gonna rip off some of my pancake and then I'm gonna dip it in the sauce. Oh. So the sauce tastes a bit spicy and kind of like pumpkin. And then the the actual pancake tastes very sweet. I have gone for a garlic roti, a famous roti chanai. You just tear it off, nice big lumps of garlic in there, and then we dip it in this sauce here. And here we go. That is very tasty. The garlic, the roti, and then this sort of curry style sauce. That's an absolute winner. So, we have now made it to Medeca Square, just enjoying a lovely can of white monster, and we have a little look around, really historic place. So we're looking at this big flag behind us. It was the first flag that was put up in Malaysia. It's been here since 1957. And the flag is big. We've come to Medeca Square and the sun has really started beating down on us now. It's quite nice here, it's quite nice and open. There isn't skyscrapers just over the top of you, they're a bit further in the distance. But it feels a little bit more historic here. And where I'm standing now is beneath the first flag that was ever risen in Malaysia. So when the Union Jack was lowered in 1957, the first Malaysian flag was put up right here behind me. Behind me in Medeca Square is the Sultan Al Abdul Samad building. I hope I got that right. It was built in the 19th century and I was speaking to the grab driver on the way here and he said it's had many functions over the years. It's been a government building, it's been a high court and today it is a museum and fun fact the clock tower on the top is said to replicate Big Ben in London, England. How interesting. It seems to be so boiling hot in Kuala Lumpur today like red hot. It's the hottest we've experienced KL. So before we go to our next amazing historic location, which apparently is better on a night, so that's why we're saving it, we need to go cool off. dried off, we've got ready and we're out again and we are at the river of life right now in Kuala Lumpur and it's really euphoric, you can hear it in the background, you can see it behind me, it is absolutely amazing. Now this is a really iconic part of Kuala Lumpur and it's where two rivers meet, the Klang River and the Gombak River and behind me is the oldest mosque in Kuala Lumpur and it looks amazing, all lit up, you can hear the prayer going on behind us, we're just going to breathe in this moment because it feels like we're in a film. The mist on the water 
and the water fountains and the lights, all of it mixed together, is like you're taking a break from the busy city life. It feels quite euphoric here. It's also quite breathtaking as well because the first flag that was ever risen in Malaysia is just across the way. And right behind me is that clock tower that Chris was talking about earlier that is based on Big Ben. And in the daytime I was a bit like, I can't really see it. But now looking at it in the dark and you see the face of the clock, it is quite familiar. And the face of the actual clock is very similar to the Big Ben in London. So we've made it to the bridge which is overlooking the oldest mosque in Kuala Lumpur and behind me as Tamara said that's where the two rivers meet and actually the history behind this very spot is where Kuala Lumpur was born so that is the first site that the first people who settled here created the very start of Kuala Lumpur and if I've got it right the the meaning of Kuala Lumpur Kuala Lumpur actually means the meeting of two rivers that are muddy and that's what Kuala Lumpur means because it started right there so this is such a historical spot and we really wanted to come here at night so we'd read that it was beautiful at night and it really didn't disappoint the mist on the water the fountain the lights it really is a beautiful spot and if you're in Kuala Lumpur I would definitely take a walk here on a night and witness that because it's special It's really cool thing when you shoot it into the air and it comes down to try to catch it. And it's for five fingers, so I'm gonna go buy it. Hello. You want this? Play it. You know how to play. Thank you. You wanna play? You wanna play? Come. I'm gonna show you. Good. I'm just gonna show you how to do it, Scarlett. Okay. Ready. Ready, yeah. Come, come, come. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Come. Another one. Yeah. Okay. Put here. This is up there. Okay. Go. Whoa. Whoa. <laughs> Okay, so it's got really late and it's all dark, but it feels so nice and safe here. The girls are playing with some spinny light up things. We are standing in the middle of Medeca Square at night time now. So earlier we were sweating hot and it was too warm for us. We've come back here and it's just absolutely breathtaking. There's children playing all over the grass. It feels nice and friendly. You've got the first flag of Malaysia over there. You've got a clock behind that looks like Big Ben. You've got the river of life behind us, the oldest mosque in um, the oldest mosque in Kuala Lumpur just there. The centre of the KL Tower behind me and it's just absolutely crazy. But we have fitted a lot into this video today. We have done so much. I am super duper tired and so are the girls as well. So we need to get them all together when I can find them because they're running around the park right now. Get them into a grab, get home and get our heads down. We hope that you really, really enjoyed this video and if you liked it, hit the thumbs up, comment down below. We try and answer every single comment, so comment down below and if you haven't subscribed, subscribe. See you in the next one.